I remember when I made the vow that I would never. Um, so I, I, I um, when when I lived in Atlanta, and when I first decided to start growing out my hair, the very first time I decided to start growing out my hair. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a great segue for this subject. We continue. Yeah, <laughs> I started growing it and. Um, was living in Atlanta and was in between jobs. I was working at the Y at one point, then was shifting over into something else. Mm-hmm. And um, went through the interview for this for this new job. It was a valet job, actually, mm-hmm. at like a high-end hotel in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, went through the interview process. It was like, yo, you are dope. You're amazing. We want to hire you right now. But your afro is a little wild. We need you to cut your hair, right? <laughs> Wild meaning like just the fact that you had an afro, or like it was unkept. No, nah, the fact that I had an afro. Okay. They had a yeah, they had you. a length limit on black hair. <laughs> I, I'm not joking. <laughs> a length limit on black. Wow. They did not have one on straight right. hair. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, for a number of different reasons, I ended up cutting my hair for mm. that job to get that job. Mm. It was also one of the greatest jobs I ever had. The tips mm. at that job and the people that I met at that job, like just the after I worked, um, I used to work like the three to eleven shift. Three p.m. to eleven. Yep. P.m. Okay. At a hotel, a high end hotel, mm. working valet. So not only was I getting to drive all of the coolest cars, <laughs> I drove I drove Jeezy's Blue Bentley several times, like mm. literally several times. Just, he used to come to the rooftop bar at the hotel that I worked at, uh, and he would literally just be like, here, and he'd bring my shit back at this time. <laughs> like he, And a lot of people are, are like that. That's why valet jobs are really cool. <laughs> I really fuck, I learned how to drive stick on the job. Wow. Yeah, like it, 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 was, it was a great job. I, I loved it. The money was good. I met... Great people had some fun. Met mm-hmm. some dots and went into their hotel rooms that were way above my income level or <laughs> anything other than the fact I knew where they could go get margaritas in the middle of the day. You know what I mean? It was a great job. Um, why am I telling this story about you? Talking about your hair? Oh yeah, yeah. So I, I had, but I had to cut my hair to get that job. Mm-hmm. Maybe six months in, the company that ran the valet for this hotel lost the contract, mm. and so. I was no longer employed there, so I cut my hair to have this job, but for only access to maybe six months of having that job. And that was when I decided, you know what, I'm never doing anything again that sacrifices who I am in order to make some money Mm. or to profit somebody else. And that, for me, at the time, included smoking weed Mm. Uh, because, you know, and this is this is getting a little deeper into the concept of the self-medicated podcast. But the whole concept of the self-medicated podcast is to take ownership over your mental health and mm-hmm. in a healthy way, being able to understand what types of things uh, help you medicate and deal and cope and, you know, manage throughout the world. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole concept of self-medication has this real negative connotation to it, but my idea behind it is using the healthy things, right? Or being able to control yourself and, and understand what helps you um, to manage and deal with all of these things. So I say all that to say for me, weed is one of them things. I I'm, I'm gonna have mm-hmm. to smoke. <laughs> like they just I'm gonna just have to be able to be THC high in certain respects for me to be able to function mm. uh in 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 certain ways. And so um, that and not cutting my hair was another one, right? Mm-hmm. Like, why the fuck does what I look like affect if what I look like, um, on some shit that I can't control <laughs> other than you just being uncomfortable? Like, yeah, I could cut my shit, mm-hmm. but my hair just naturally grows like this. I don't, there's nothing I can do about it besides chemically modifying it for your comfort. Right. I'm not doing that. Um, so, so after that job is when I, uh, when I first started making commitments to myself, non-negotiables, things of like real understanding of my own standards, morals, and values, and, but also mm-hmm. being able to understand others and evaluating where mine and theirs fit <laughs> and understanding what type of mental health impact it can take on 
being involved, especially in the business sense or making money or jobs or paying bills when those two things don't necessarily align. Um, okay. <clears throat> I, I have two, yeah. two things to say about that. For sure. One, I think it was fucked up. They had that policy on um, curly, coarse, kinky, nappy hair, black hair, whatever you want to call it. Facts. Two, this is where I want to, uh, I guess, push you a little bit. What I agree, like your hair shouldn't have anything to do as far as your success and like the opportunities you are allowed access to. But unfortunately, that's not the reality of most situations where your outward appearance determines certain types of rooms you could get into. Right. And I really got this um, brought home to me when I was listening to uh, Kevin Samuels. Of course. <laughs> uh, conversation, actually. This is one of the times where he was talking to men. Mm-hmm. And he was talking to a brother where the brother was saying, like, you know, he's in a corporate world and um, he has locks. And he's like, you know, I'm doing well. It's not going to work. Right. And he was like, well, the people above you definitely don't have dreads. And he's like, and those people, if they do, they probably have remained stagnant or they haven't advanced at the rate of people that have more of the homogenous, right. like C-suite looks, C-suite meaning like, yeah. you know, CEO, CFO, those people of that stature. And I was like, damn, he's right. I never thought about it that way. Because I think a lot of times as black people in general, our hair is a part of who we are. It's a part of how we display ourselves, and like it's part of the Bible. <laughs> that's <laughs> it's a whole true. Bible story that's true. around your fucking hair. And then I realized to, I had to think about like is hair that important? Where I would want it to stop me from gaining access to certain opportunities, and for me, I realized it wasn't that important. Mm-hmm. I think also part of like taking pride in your hair is the ability to even grow it, because I feel like people that are bald or balding the hair isn't as important to them in that sense because right. they can just cut it off and be good. But there are also bald people that will pay crazy amounts of money to stay bald, <laughs> try to fix their alopecia issues. Right. right. No, what I find it interesting is, um, you know, my entire life I've been taught exactly what you were saying. Mm-hmm. Dress for the role that you want to have dress for the job that you want. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, my my viewpoint is there's zero pushback from me on that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right? You're 1,000% right. If you are in a corporate position, then you better motherfucking button your ass up, <laughs> <laughs> to el- especially yeah. as a black person, to eliminate any other excuse other than your performance and your merit to justify your performance. That's right? exactly one of the reasons why I'm going into barbering because I don't – in order to make the amount of money I want to make, I would have to look a certain and dress a certain way. And I don't want to do that. Exactly. So now we're getting into my thing mm-hmm. is there's also this other world where you can own your own shit. Mm-hmm. And that's where for me, I kind of got forced into this <laughs> because I'm just, I, it's just, I'm my personality. I'm just not going to be able to conform to certain shit. Yeah. And some of that shit that I just can't, like you were just talking about, I sat and had to make a decision, Mm -hmm. which one was more important to me. I made different decisions. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And because of those decisions, I've also had to enact different things. Right. So that means I have to, in order to have the freedom to wear what the fuck I want and to not have to be self-conscious about smelling like weed all the time, Mm. I have had to invest and put in time and energy into entities to be, successful that allows me to do mm-hmm. those things. So it's a give and take. It's always, you know, it's always. Yeah. I, I, I it's, think there's it's, a lot to it. Even though both require a lot of work, it's far easier to go off and do your own thing opposed to try to change a whole system that's already set up. Oh, one thousand One way. I always, always recommend doing your own thing. You're going to get the freedom you want to do what you want. The problem is some of you niggas suck and you're going to fail. <laughs> that's the problem. That's Everybody's going to fail. It's how well, you handle that adversity. That's exactly. Yeah. Cause we're all going to suck at the mm-hmm. beginning. <laughs> if you ever listen to this podcast, when we first started, when we was doing like mm-hmm. 30 minute episodes, you remember mm-hmm. that? Yeesh. <laughs> but at the end of the day, like you get better. You, if you continue, but everybody mm-hmm. don't have the kind of 
uh, wherewithal. makeup or, or wherewithal. You're using big words now. You started last again. week. I'm bringing the big words this week. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's that's. So on the one hand, it may be easier logistically, mm. but in terms of the makeup of most people's personalities and accepting failure and learning from it on a consistent and repetitive basis, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if everybody cut out for all that shit. That's why I. I that's why I love baseball. Mm. Baseball really taught me a lot. My I remember. Very, very young, one of the first things my dad said to me that stuck out to me is sports is a microcosm for life. Mm. And to me, baseball was the best example of that because you fail way more than you are successful. That's very true. And you have to learn how to be okay with that. (laughs) You have to learn how Mm. to contextualize success in the context of this particular game. That's a great point. Yeah, that's why. why, And and baseball is the least athletic (laughs) and most mental sport mm. there is at least other mm. common sports maybe maybe like fucking bocce ball or some shit might I was be maybe more mental. golf or chess more mental chess probably more mental oh yeah for sure if you it's consider it a sport at all. yeah yeah, yeah. 